So welcome everyone to a webinar on how to host a virtual game night in your congregation. I'm Phil Lund, a Congregational Life Consultant with the Mid-America Region. And my co-host tonight is... Sharon Dittmar, Congregational Life Consultant from the Mid-America Region. Hi. Oh, I even got a little applause. Thanks yeah. for the love, people. Hi, <laughs> yeah. And this kind of grew out of, uh, we did a webinar just last week, right, Sharon? And we hmm? were talking about- oh, Paula is here. <laughs> we were talking Paula about- Paula here. We were talking about how to uh, <laughs> just do virtual small group meetings using Zoom. And it, the idea of using Zoom for game nights came up. And um, I was kind of talking about it because the, a couple of weeks ago, we did do a game night with my um, family, my wife's uh, extended family. And uh, we had about, hmm, oh, I don't know, a dozen of us there. Some of us were together in one room in our different family units and a couple other people just joined us. And we played a game, we call it Three Times a Lady, but it, sometimes it's called Fishbowl. Uh, um, it's where everybody puts in words into a hat and you pull out, you make teams and you pull out the words and uh, you have in the team, one person needs to like describe the, the word that they see without using the actual word. Um, you go through a round that way. The next time you go around the way we play it, you do it in charades. And it's very interesting that charades worked virtually, um, although we didn't have this many people. Um, and then the third time you go around, you um, just can only say one word just once too, to try to give the clue. So if, our, if, the, if, the, if the word or phrase was uh, 24 Farnsworth, which is the headquarters address for the UUA, the one word I might use to describe that would be headquarters. And then people might know that after they've learned what the word was. Anyway, that was my first uh, attempt to do a game night and it worked really well for us. And in fact, it worked so well, we had another game night last Sunday and this coming Sunday, we're gonna have a game night and um, just to let you know, the way we're doing that game night is uh, each little family unit is, um, is uh, going to choose a game for us and figure out how we're going to play it together. So um, last time we played Clue. I'll tell you about more about that later. Okay, so welcome. We're talking about virtual game nights and how to do it in your congregation. And there are a few simple steps to start out. One, pick a night on which to do your game night. Um, how many, when, when we could meet face-to-face -face back in the day, um, how many people would do something like a game night in their congregation, like on a Friday night or something like that? Yeah, you know, you invite families and, you know, people over and you just put the games out and you just play a lot of games. A lot of congregations do that. So Friday night, Saturday night, whatever it is, pick a night and have your, um, game night on that night. Then the second thing you need to do is um, send out an invitation and let people know you're gonna have this game night. Um, I think one way to do that is email, of course. You could also call people up. And something um, Sharon brought up when we were talking about game nights is uh, just sending out a simple email may not quite be enough because you might have some people who are a little hesitant to like even try this whole thing out. So what did you have to do, Sharon, when you ran into that with your game night? I had to beg. So I essentially <laughs> sent out a text message to about 10 people or family and friends. And I wasn't thinking like an introvert. I was thinking like an extrovert, like this will be fun. They don't need to know each other because not all of them will recognize even their phone numbers or have them. And boy, I got crickets back. So two people were like, yeah, and everyone else was like, you're scaring me. So then I like texted my sister and I was like, would you please do this? And she's like, okay. Um, so then we had enough people on. What was fascinating is my sister, who is an introvert, said it was the most fun thing she had done all day. She was nervous about doing it. She was nervous she wouldn't be able to play right. I'm like, Joanne, it's game night. <laughs> um, so just... Just so you know, I think making it real um, 
helping people understand what kind of games it's very easy if they can recognize each other or just making individual calls if you don't hear back enough mm -hmm. yeah so you might have to reach out a little bit beyond those um email invitations um and just to let you know too if you have any questions or comments sharon is going to be watching the chat while um i'm talking and i will watch the chat while Sharon's talking, so if you have any questions or comments, put them in the chat and we'll try to address those. Okay, so you pick your night, you send out your invitation. Here's what you'll need. You'll need a Zoom account. How many people have a Zoom account? Just kidding, I know you all have Zoom accounts, right? Maybe, yeah, okay. If you don't have a Zoom account, get a Zoom account, because why? Because the second thing you're gonna need are some game hosts, right? If you're gonna be playing more than one game, you're gonna need different hosts to play those different games. Um, um, yes, so um, if you have a question, could you please put it in the chat rather than raising your hand? Thank you. Okay, so, um, so you're gonna need game hosts. And I, what I wanna say is, one of the ways you can do your game nights then when you have different hosts are um doing breakout rooms in your zoom okay how many people have done breakout rooms yet when they've done zoom yeah you getting getting used to it all right yeah okay well we'll, we'll practice breakout rooms here a little bit um to do that, or another thing I was thinking to do your game rooms, or uh, to do your uh, game night, would be to send people who want to play particular games to another host's uh, Zoom account. Does that make sense? So like if Sharon and I were uh, hosting the game nights and we we're going to play two different games, we could do breakout group, group groups within one of our Zoom accounts, or we could each have our Zoom account. We could all gather together and say, okay, everybody, uh, those of you who want to play this game, stay here with me. And those who want to play this game, go over to Sharon's um, Zoom account, and we could put that in the chat, and everybody could see it, and they could just go over there. So that's kind of like going to like a different location, you know. Um, so those are a couple of ways to do that. But the point is, you're going to need hosts for each of the games, okay? So that's one thing to think about too. How many games are you going to play? Sharon, have a question? Coming. Well, we have two excellent questions in the chat box. One, uh, Sherry says, what level of account do you need on Zoom to have a handful of hosts? Right. Um, that The first paid license one, I believe, will allow you to add um, more hosts to your license. Um, but I, I think, I don't know, I can make several co-hosts. I don't know exactly how many you can make, but you can do several. But yes, Paul says that's correct. Yes. So yes, you you with that that first paid uh, level that you get, um, you can get ten. Jen is saying so. That sounds about right. And then we have a question in here that I just want you to hold. I know you're going to come back to it for when you talk a little bit about how we do games. But two people have the same question. Phil, how did you manage the words in the fishbowl game? With everyone in different households, how did you do the equivalent of drawing a slip of paper with the word? That is such a good question. Mm. Um, and I'll get to that when we talk about how to do this with the technology then. And if I don't get to it, remind me, Sharon, okay? All right, so uh, know how many games you wanna play, you wanna offer, that's gonna tell you how many hosts you're gonna need. Um, we've just seen that maybe 10 is the maximum for having hosts um, on a Zoom account. Or, as we said, you could have people with their own individual accounts and be sending people off to those different accounts to play the games. All right? Now, I told you I was going to tell you, uh, talk about what kind of Zoom options you need to enable on your settings um, in order to do this. And there are, I think, four big ones that you need to do. One, you need to make sure you have your breakout rooms if you're going to go down that route. Make sure your Zoom account is ready to let you do breakout rooms. Uh, two, change that setting that we talked about earlier about uh, allowing people to share their screens, anybody to share their screens. 
Um, you want to change that setting. We've been saying the default setting when you get your Zoom account is that everybody can share screens. And we don't want to do that because of what Donna mentioned, because of the Zoom bombing that has been going on, where somebody that has really no relation to your group shows up and then they share the screen with all sorts of vulgar imagery and things like that. Um, but for playing games, you may need people to use the screen, and we'll talk about that. So you're going to want to let people to be able to share their screens. At the very least, the hosts need to be able to share their screens, too, because there may be multiple things that we would be doing with our games that would require that. OK? And then the third thing that you want to activate is your whiteboard. Um, I was surprised that uh, you need to activate all these things. They don't come um, set automatically on your Zoom account. So, you're going to need to activate your whiteboard if you're going to be playing some sort of games that, um, that people are going to be sharing images with. And we're going to show you some games like that. I had a, a great uh, email from uh, somebody on Monday, I believe it was, where they heard that we were talking about game nights. They went ahead and tried to do a game night with their family, and they did. And they ended up playing a game with Ginny, right? It was Ginny. I see you over there. You were on my other screen. I just scrolled over to see you. Yes. Maybe, Ginny, when we get to that, you can tell us a little bit about what you did. But, but they played a game where they actually needed to have that whiteboard. And it looked like it was going to be a lot of fun. So that may be the, one of the kind of games that you want to play. Um, and we're going to get to that a little bit uh, later. Actually, we're going to get to that very soon. Once you have all those things enabled, you can talk about the kind of games that you want to play. And I'm going to do one big division here in games. Um, there are two kinds of games we can do here. Um, so, before yes? you go further, you were going to tell us four things, and I didn't get the fourth one. Oh, um, breakout rooms, screen share, whiteboard, and polling. Polling. Okay, you didn't talk about that. Oh, I didn't. Um, so I'll put that in, and then we just have a question. Yes. It, are these settings at all account levels, or do you need to at least buy the basic one? Uh, well, the basic one is the free one, I think, but the, the first level of the licensed one is where you get more of these options. That's what my, uh, yeah, you need at least a pro one for the breakout rooms and some of these other things. So, and, and a lot of congregations have been getting that one pro account, you know, to do their basic Zoom thing. So that's what we invest, not I'm confusing words here, to do their, the Zoom functions that we're finding that we all need to do these days. So, um, so I'm willing to bet that a lot of your congregations have that one licensed account that will allow you to do this for your Zoom nights. If not, you may have a member of your congregation who has a licensed account that would be willing to um, uh, host a game night for you like that. So just things to check out like that. Um, I'm sorry if I missed polling. That was my segue, actually, Sharon. So thank you. So the fourth setting you need to do is polling because you're going to need polling if you want to do um, games with the whole group, which is what we're going to do right now. You're the whole group, and we're going to play a game right now. And maybe you have heard of this game. Oh, boy, I hope it shows up. Yes, I have. It's showing up. Yes, I've heard of this. The game is called Would You Rather. How many people have ever played Would You Rather? Would You Rather? Yeah? OK. We're going to play Would You Rather right now. Um, and uh, would you rather is you get a choice. Would you rather do this or that? Or would you, would you rather have this or that? And it's really kind of a conversation starting game. And so I've got a couple would you rather questions. This one, I really, it just, uh, it spoke to me. Would you rather have a dog that could hum or a cat that could whistle? Would you rather have a dog that could hum or a cat that can whistle. And as you can see, the question shows up in the polling and you can vote on it. And we are seeing what we have here in our responses. Wow. With 62% with, with voting, a dog that could hum is leading by 50, 58%. All right. So one of the ways I see this could work is uh, you start out your game night by having some of these sort of questions just to get people, you know, into the, into the uh, spirit of playing a game. 
Um, and one of the things I was thinking that we could do with it too is to um, go into breakout rooms where people can kind of um, discuss while they've done this. Um, yeah, Paul, I think you can show the results once they've all come in or once I decide to end the poll. And right now we only have 67% voting, but um, let's see where we are with 67%, all right? Uh, end the poll and share results. There you go. And I got a question from Annika. Can only a host create a poll or can all the other? Yes. The polls are something you need to do ahead of time in your host account. That's a great question. Um, I went to not, not my settings on my actual Zoom application, but I went to the zoom.us website, logged into my account, went to this particular meeting, you scroll down to the bottom and it says create a poll, something like that. And you can just start putting these questions in. And what we have is a 60, can anybody, can anybody see the poll results? You can't see them? Attendees are now viewing poll results. All right. It is supposed to be, it says it's supposed to be viewing that. Let me check on my other thing here. It's showing up on my other account here. Oh, no way. I know it does work because I did it on a Zoom meeting earlier you did. today. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well. Okay. Wait. Hang on. Well, look at him. We He's had a good. We it. had an interesting suggestion, sharing my screen. <laughs> but then we're getting that recursive sort of thing. Yeah. No, that's not. That's just showing what I had up there. Oh, that shows uh, the settings, like how you have yeah. to click for the whiteboard to yeah, show. Yeah, that's what all. I had. Okay. Well, I don't know. I did say sh I did put sharing results. Attendees are now viewing poll results. Well, I guess I'm going to have to tell you what it is. It's sixty percent. <laughs> would rather have a dog that could hum, and 40% would rather have a cat who could whistle, that could whistle. Um, you could draw it on a whiteboard too, that's good. Oh, okay, you could draw it on a whiteboard too. Stop sharing, stop sharing. Can people see it now? I shared it. Oh, you shared it. As yeah, it came up on mine, and then I said share results. Yeah, okay. Do you wanna do it again, or all right. All right, these are all things that you need to work out. Actually, see, Sharon and I are just using uh, you all to help us test out how to do a game night. You're just, you're just helping us do this. So, um, so that's, a, that's a, an example of like a full group sort of thing. And what I want to do now is um, break us up into the breakout rooms. And I'd just like for you all to spend a few minutes um, just talking about why you made the decision that you made, or if you didn't, Now's your chance to tell somebody. So let's just uh, go into breakout rooms for just a few minutes. I'm going to do um, 10 breakout rooms with three to four participants. Um, we're going to open the rooms. Now you should be getting an invitation to go to one of the rooms. And uh, go ahead and go to the little rooms and just chat amongst yourselves. Why did you choose one or the other? I might. Oh, Kelly's got a question. Haven't set up breakout rooms before. I'm wondering if you can set up time. Yes. Um, once you, excuse me. Okay. So once you um, set up your breakout rooms, uh, they're kind of at a default thing of um, a 60 second countdown. But you can get in there ahead of time in those settings and you can say how long you want the breakout rooms to last and how long you want the countdown to be too. So you have that versatility. So let's say you were gonna break out into rooms for game night and you wanted to put a limit on how long people uh, were going to be. Um, you could say, okay, we're gonna play games for 30 minutes and then we're all gonna come back together. And you could set those rooms for 30 minutes and you could set the rooms to give like a, a two minute countdown so people could finish up playing or whatever. So, good question. Yes, you can do that. All right. Phil, one thing about polling. Yes. Someone told me that once a poll is held and you have taken part of it, if you go to the bottom of the, your screen, the polling icon will show. And if you click on that icon, it'll show you the results. Mm -hmm. you, so you all can tell me if you can find your results that way. Mm -hmm. I, I can see it that way. 
Mm-mm. No. Mm-mm. No. Wow. Right. And I'm trying the share results thing again. I think the polling button only shows up on the co- on the hosts. I had a number of people tell me they were not the host, they didn't have polling, and it showed up after I ran a poll. Yeah. Um, I'm still learning from everyone. I don't have it. Okay. okay. And so that's another little glitchy thing we found. Um, but you can always just announce the results like I did. So, all right. Um, so one of the things I see I envision happening with the polling is one, you can find games like that would work for whole groups. So there's uh, would you rather, um, what's another one? Never have I ever, right? We could ask, have you ever done this? You ever done that? I saw the worst case scenario thing, um, had a little game where it's like, what do you do when you're on a runaway camel? And it had three suggestions and one of them was true, two truths and a lie. Yes. Tons of games you can play like this. So you can like give them to the whole group and then break people up into the breakout rooms and they could just get a little um, a little icebreaker starting to get to know each other sort of thing before you go into your game night. So just think about ways you can use the polling or ways you can use those breakout rooms at the beginning to kind of just get people together. All right. I call those whole group games. But the um, other kind of game then are these smaller games that you would need to do in the smaller groups, say, I don't know, four, six, eight, maybe 10. And I went looking for what would be good games to play in groups like that. And I came across uh, something called uh, Victorian parlor games. Has anybody heard of Victorian parlor games? Yeah. 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 Okay. This is apparently what. Some folks during the Victorian era would do. They they get in their parlors and play these sort of games. And they're most of them, not most of them, but a lot of them are word games. And doing these gr- games in groups kind of lends itself to word games. And Sharon was so excited about this idea that she just went off and did her own game night with her family. And she did some of these Victorian parlor games. And Sharon is here tonight. To tell us about how that went, aren't you, Sharon? Yes. So after I twisted my sister's arm by text and made my husband come in from repairing a motor mm-hmm. and got my 18-year-old son and two friends on the phone uh, or on Zoom, <clears throat> excuse me, we played three Victorian parlor games. There's several that you can find them. I think we're going to include a list of some um, that Phil has found, which is great. Phil was the person who introduced me to them. One that's very common is called The Minister's Cat. We played that one as um, it is very multi-generational. Actually, every game I played was multi-generational. I would say The Minister's Cat was the most multi-generational of the three I played. And um, it's a funny game and it was a great one to start with because it was like an icebreaker. Um, I've played it now twice in Zoom rooms and yes, you can just Google Victorian parlor games, but um, we'll also submit a list after this. And um, essentially it's just, and it could be honestly the plumber's cat. It doesn't matter, if the, the, it's just called that. But you go with the alphabet A and say there's six people in your room and you say, we're gonna start with A. The minister's cat is an attractive cat. The minister's cat, the next person says, is an amiable, amiable cat. And the next person says, the minister's cat is an awful cat. So everyone has to find an A adjective to describe the cat. You go in the circle once and then you do a B and then you do a C and then you do a D. And the reason it is so incredibly funny is because your very prim friend, Monica, when she cannot think of a G adjective, ends up saying the minister's cat is a gassy cat. And everyone falls out because Monica has spent her life trying to bring order to the world. And she has a husband and two sons. And so they like bombard her with gassy things all day. And to have Monica end up having to say that because she could think of no other G adjective pretty much made my afternoon. So it's the things like this are, that are the natural hilarity to it all. Um, and I have two more, Phil, that we played, but I'll let you say what you want to say next. Oh, um, we're going to break into rooms and just play a round of um, Minister's Cat, too, when, when uh, Sharon is done here. Just want to let people know. Okay, Sharon. Oh, it's fun. 
The other one we played is a laughing game. And I was like, this will never work virtually because you're supposed to be in a room. It's called the laughing game. There's six of you. The first person says, ha. The second person says, ha, ha. The third person says, ha, ha, ha. And you're thinking, this is not remotely funny. We get to my sister, who was the fourth person, and she looks at us all and she goes, ha, 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 ha. Like, cause she wasn't sure she was doing it right. Three of us laughed immediately. And as soon as you laugh, you're out of the game. So for some reason, this one was hilarious to us. I don't know why. And then the last game we played was called um, the Umbrella Stand. It has a name I hate called the Elephant's Foot Umbrella Stand because, well, umbrella stands used to be shaped that way, which just disturbs me to no end um, when I think about conservation and things like that. So you sometimes search for it under that. I also found it just under umbrella stand. Um, and this is a game that's kind of more of a thinking game where you, um, whoever starts creates a code in their head. Um, I went to the store and bought a boat, say. And say your rule in your head was that every word had to have two vowels in it. I went to the store and bought a boat. boat. The next person says, they have no idea what your rule is. They're like, I went to the store and I bought a pin. And you're like, they did not have a pin at the store. And people are like, hmm. And then you go to the next person and this next person says, I went to the store and bought a twist tie. And you're like, holy Moses, you're counting all of the uh, vowels. And you're like, I'm sorry, there were no twist ties at the store. And then we get to the third person and the third person is like, I went to the store and I bought a phone. And you say to yourself, ah, there were two vowels in phone. And so you say, they did have um, phones at the store. And then everyone's like, oh, I wonder what the rule is. And you keep going until a person can guess it. So yes, um, we just kind of found this trove of games like that. And um, they're, they're games that you don't need a board for, you don't need the whiteboard for, you don't need a hat to put letters or words in to pull out or anything like that. They're just games that you can just play off the top of your head. So we're gonna just give it another try. In our breakout rooms, we're gonna do a, the minister's cat. Do you remember however many people you have in your breakout rooms? I think I'll make them a little bigger this time. Um, the first time you say the minister's cat is a, a adjective cat, an adorable cat, or an anxious cat, or whatever. And once you've done all the A's, you go around to the B's, you go around to the C's. Um, you know, you're supposed to be um, kicked out of the game if you can't think of one or you take too long, but we're just kind of goofing around with it here. What would be interesting is to see how far a group gets when I put you into groups here. So um, let's see here. I'm gonna recreate the groom, rooms. I'm gonna give you a few more participants. And I'm going to ask you to just give this a try. Try the minister's cat. And uh, we'll give you five minutes, we'll call you back and we'll see which group was able to go the furthest down the alphabet. I think last time we did this, somebody got to the letter G, I heard. Maybe I, I don't know. We'll see. Okay, off to your groups. We'll see you in five minutes. So this could be a fun game with kids too, right? So. Um, oh, yeah, the okay. <laughs> now polls showed up. Yeah. <laughs> I got oh, the polls showed up? What? Yeah. What's going on? Okay, I hear some groups got to G, letter G. Anybody get beyond G? We got to J. J. We got to J. We got to J. We got to O. O. Then we get to P. We got to P, I think. Did we get to P? Okay. Yeah. Oh. Oh. I think you're right. O. Oh. Wow. Got or got to V. V? Over it, Cheeker. Yeah. <laughs> This is this is totally a game depending on the group you're with, you know. If you if you're really <laughs> gonna go for it, you know, you might just be throwing those adjectives out there. Um, anyway, I hope you enjoyed that, and I think it just shows you how simple some of these games can be. And remember, I, you know, I forgot to say at the beginning, but the goal here is just to keep connecting people, right? We just want to keep staying connected with each other, 
and playing games like this or you know whether i mean uh to me what i found out when we play games with my um wife's family we you know we do that during the holidays and it's always one of the big highlights of the holidays well now you know we've decided to do it once a once a week on Sunday night. And now we have this, you know, it's a little ritual that we have. It's gonna be helping us uh, make it through this. Um, Phil, I wanna go back to a question. Someone had said, Lynn, Jacoby, hi, Lynn. Hey. Um, and by the way, hi, Scott Stewart. I see you in there. Um, Lynn said, I was thinking that two truths and a lie with a small object in our homes would work. And someone said, I'm not sure what you mean, Lynn. Can you explain what you were thinking? <laughs> Just if, uh, you know, like we all brought knickknacks, right? And we told the story about where they came from or what they were oh. or how we, how we got them. And we would lie, you know, tell the truth about two and lie about one. It would just, you know, it's something you wouldn't naturally do in a group, uh, but you could do in your homes. And we That's... would get to know each other in a different way. Yes, that's great. That, that um, you know, like I said, we're just trying to connect. And, you know, here we have a chance to be with people if, that we know from a congregation and maybe not many of them have ever been to our house, right? Okay. So that's a perfect idea is we can take something from our house, a little object. And like you said, we can tell three things about where the objects came and only one of them is true and people have to guess what it is. Um, I'll tell you, I found another one too. I, uh, it's called, uh, the tray or something like that, but you take a tray full of small objects and you cover it up and then you let everybody look at it for just a few seconds and then you cover it up again and then, you know, you kind of distract them for a while and you remove one of the objects and then they have to, you know, remember what the objects were and describe what's missing or any kind of combination like that. So you can do visual things like that as well. So I love that idea, Lynn, though, because it does help people get, you know, helps us, helps us get to know each other a little better too. So And Phil, excellent. there were um, just a couple more questions I'll ask right now. Leslie Woodward, hi Leslie, said we did show and tell with either telling the truth or lying and the group had to vote on whether it was truth or lie. That would be a fun way to do a poll. That's kind of funny. Uh, um, that is funny. It is a good idea. Um, and I'll just go to Sherry's question next. How will we find out if the UUA gets us a bulk account with Zoom? So our administrator sent an email to congregations today. Oh. Um, so I was told that within a week, the UUA is gonna let us know. So your office administrators, board presidents, um, clergy should have received something and should receive something again. If a week has gone by and you don't know, you could email me or Phil or Andrew Zoller um, A-Z-A-L-L-A-R at UUA.org, but I'm S-D-I-T-T-M-A-R at UUA.org. Yeah. And um, Barb says they need 100 churches to sign up, so that's interesting oh, to know. You muted. And then, um, so, Laura, has anyone here used some kind of electronic game video game for virtual game night? Oh, my internet is unstable. If you yeah, have, go uh, ahead. I haven't, but. Well, I haven't yet either, but there are games like that available where you can all play together, you know, on another site and play some video games that way together. And that's what, you know, that's what gamers do anyway. And they have a lot of great, you know, interactions doing that as well. Um, but some of them have board games that you can do and things like this. Um, and you can explore those. Uh, we're just trying to find right now some things that you might be able to do, like you could do a game night, you know, right away here. Somebody attempted Jackbox TV via Dystopia and yeah. So there are various, various sites that allow you to do that. Yeah. Nah. Okay. Right. So um, I think, I think the kind of things we're talking about at least to get started is more in the spirit of what a game night would be at a church you know, where you're all gonna get together and then you're gonna decide what games you wanna go off and play and things like that. But I don't discount other ways of connecting people too. And if, if playing a game like on Jackbox TV or something like that is a way to do it. Uh, Catan is available online, yeah. So there are ways, like if people have been playing these games, it's great, you can Ticket to Ride's available online. So there's some games that people might be aware of that you can play together online like that. Sharon? 
Um, someone wanted to know about whiteboard and I know you're going to get to that, but I also see Leslie Woodward. You said you played scavenger hunt and it was hilarious. What is, how do you do scavenger hunt online? Is it a, so, would love to hear from you. Um, so we created a, a list of scavenger hunt items and then used breakout rooms to divide into teams. And so we started out with 10 items and each team had to find those items um, within 10 minutes, and then we all got back and we um, proved that we had actually found the item within our team. But we had some really cool things like um, find the oldest expired uh, food item in your refrigerator or pantry, and the team that had the oldest one got the point. Um, we also had things like um, find the oldest picture of an ancestor or relative and the team that um so and then when we came back you had to say whose whose picture this was um and how old the picture and a little bit about the person um so it kind of fleshed out the game a little bit um everybody tells me they had a wonderful time i watched them um i thought it was it was so much fun just to watch them and not play thank you um, that's great. Virtual online scavenger hunt. And again, that, that lets people just kind of, you know, sort of virtually be in each other's homes for a while and sharing things and stuff like that. So that's connecting us and bringing us closer. I love it. Fantastic. Um, so these virtual parlor games are, for the most part, word games um, with maybe a few variations. I want to show you another possibility. And this is using your whiteboard. Um, and let me see if I can do this as my co-host self. Okay, you can see my whiteboard? Yeah. Okay, so this is, um, I'm gonna show you a game I, I had, and then I'm gonna ask uh, Jenny to maybe talk about what she did uh, with their, virtual game night. Um, this is just a way to play some, maybe some simple games um, that, uh, these would be good for multi-generational games. This one I actually found, it's something called um, Space Man. It's a non-capital punishment version of Space of Hangman. And then I thought, well, let's make it, you know, non-gendered too. So I'm gonna call it Spaceship, okay? So this is a game called, oh, oh, hang on a second. I had to get my pencil here hooked up. There we go. Space ship. So what you need here is uh, somebody to have a whiteboard and be able to play the games with you. So this is just uh, doing another level rather than everything being a, a word game. This is a word game too, but it's one that you have visuals. So it's played like hangman. Um, so you have uh, the word that you want people to guess. And just like you would do with hangman, you have people guess letters. Um, let me see, what is the first letter everybody always guesses is E, right? That's the one. I think I'm having a technology failure right now because I was supposed to, there we go. So E, and then you always guess another vowel, don't you? I think you usually guess A, right? You might see where this is going, but I'm gonna throw some letters off so you can see how you actually play the game. So let's say somebody guesses G, so you'd write um, G. I'm gonna to have to do this with my finger and this is what I wanted to avoid. Uh, okay. <laughs> I am having, really, my, my pencil is not working. So, oh, let's see here. Phil, is that your pencil for your iPad? Because a lot of us are like, how do you write on the whiteboard? <laughs> yeah, I'm writing with my pencil for my iPad, but I think I might have to write with my finger now. Nope, it's not letting me do that. Welp. Yeah. Oh, okay. Let me see here. Uh, yeah, you can use your mouse if you have mouses. <laughs> uh, 
There we go. Okay. All right, it is just not working for me. Um, I will send you the link on the rules for this game, but you're seeing here what you're having is the opportunity. Um, you're not going to draw us a spaceship? I can't. <laughs> I'm devastated. You can't write on it at all, like even badly? Like what? Badly. Like draw a really bad oh, spaceship? Oh, I'm trying to badly too, yes. I'm trying to let it <laughs> use my finger. <laughs> Oh, and we have a question. So only the host can write on the whiteboard? The whiteboard is one of those share screen sort of things where you can let people add to it too. But you need to go in and set those, change those settings. Um, and then someone else asked, can other, um, there can we other go. people control the whiteboard or would you always be the one with the word people are guessing? Okay, so letter G. Okay, so I'll just show you what you do for the spaceship is you just make it out of a few simple sort of lines. And once you've completed all the lines and you have a little a alien person standing here, antennas, that's how you know it's an alien, right? Mm -hmm. And rather than being hung, when the game, when the, if they don't get enough letters, the alien actually gets transported into the spaceship and off the spaceship goes. Anyway, the point is, that is another kind of game you can play. And actually, I'm gonna stop sharing my screen here and maybe Ginny would, um, if and you Phil, would be so kind, Before we go to Ginny, you? we have a couple questions about the whiteboard, just like technical things. Um, are you always the one, can other people control the whiteboard or just the host? Okay, um, let's let Jenny, Jenny talk oh, sure. about what she okay. did and then we'll answer because there's a lot. Jenny, can you kind of just tell us your, about your experience? Yeah, and I can answer some of those questions. I'll show you the game that we played with my family in a minute. But to answer the questions about the screen sharing, we were playing a game, which I'll show you, where we were constantly rotating around who was sharing their screen. And so as long as the host has set up the meeting to allow everyone to share their screens, then you can just keep rotating who's the person who's going to be sharing the screen. And when you are the person who's sharing your screen, then up at the top, you see a, a toolbar that allows you to draw lines, boxes, put in shapes. Um, I just taught someone how to use the whiteboard a, a couple of days ago, and within 15 seconds, they were up and running with it. It's really intuitive, very, very simple. Once you figure out how to share your screen and you see the whiteboard option, you'll be off and running. With using it. Thank, um, thank you for answering those questions. So let's hear what you did then. Yes. So now I'm going to share my screen and I'll show you the email that I sent to Phil with what we did. So here, I'm going to hit the share screen button. And the host is disabled participant screen. Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna make you a co-host, okay? Great. Just get to the participants and All right. <clears throat> yes, and now I have that option. And I'm first going to show you um, what we did in this email here. And I'm going to share this screen. Here's, here's the email that I sent to Phil, um, which showed him that we um, played a game of Pictionary. So um, in this first example that I show, my daughter-in-law drew fly paper. So here's fly and paper. And here's all <laughs> of us um, looking at it. And whoever was the first one to guess was the winner. Um, this next one was table tennis. And um, what I mentioned to Phil is that I looked online. We happen to have the Pictionary game, but we, I can find all kinds of, um, if you don't own Pictionary, there's lots of websites with Pictionary words out there. You can just Google it, and you'll find lots of words that you can use to play the game with. And um, we did that, again, by sharing, continuing to pass around who was sharing the, the screen. I feel if you want to take back um, control, you're welcome to. Okay. <clears throat> I'll, I'll hit the stop share button. Okay. All right. Thank you. Thank you, Jenny. So, um, 
Yeah, I was just thinking about that spaceship game, and then Jenny wrote about Jenny wrote about playing Pictionary, and I thought, yes, that's perfect. That's exactly the kind of stuff we can do with this. And one, um, one last thought is is that it's a fabulous intergenerational game. You can go anywhere from little kids all the way up to grandparents. Yeah, yeah, very multi generational. Excellent. And so I wanted, what I wanted to say about this game is so uh, Ginny was able to play Pictionary without having the Pictionary game because a lot of these board games that we have that you see for sale are really just, um, you know, versions that people have made into a board game of games that people played anyway. So there's always been, you know, sort of a drawing and guess what I'm drawing sort of game. And so some of the other games that you can play like that are Boulder Dash which is the fictionary game or dictionary game. How many people know that game? Um, it's where you take a word, an obscure word, and you have the definition of it, and then you might have three other um, phony definitions, and people have to guess which is the right definition, which is the phony definition, things like that. Various ways you can play it for scores and things like that. Um, also, there's a thing called the game of things which actually I've seen just called things. And basically it's who can come up with the silliest answer and then can you guess who came up with that answer? So um, it's just things like things that dogs really say. You know, if you could understand dogs, what are the things dogs would say or anything like that? And again, you can make these multi-generational, you know, just silly sort of things like what tune, uh, what things would your cat whistle if your cat could whistle? Or what things would your dog hum if your dog could hum, depending on what you voted for? So you can take board games like that and you can um, play them without the board. And so I'm going to tell you what happened with our second game night that we did um, with our family. And actually, we did use the board for this. We played Clue on Sunday night. And the way it worked was all of the families had a clue game at their home. So we were all able to set up our own boards. And we just skipped one of the rules, which is using the dice to see how many steps you go. If you've ever played clue, you know, you have to roll to get into the rooms. This is, this is a variation that that exists non-virtually is um, that you just go to the rooms. You just go to each room without having to roll dice, the dice to get there. So it makes the room, uh, makes the game move faster and it's just kind of easier to keep track of where people are. So we played Clue by ourselves and the way we worked it, and this is gonna get to the question about when we did the fishbowl game. The way we worked it is we have one of our um, nephews is a real gamer sort of person. And he's just been agreed to be sort of the game master. And he's taking care of all those little uh, things that, uh, you know, you would do collectively together. He's just taking care of it on his own. And he's the person who um, pulled out the cards for the, the, uh, the murderer, the murder weapon, and what room it was in. And he had those set aside. And then, he texted us, that's when we got, what we're getting to here, is he texted us what our cards were in, in Clue. And so we knew what cards we had. And then from, that, from then on, we just say, okay, I'm going to go to the conservatory and I'd like, you know, Colonel Mustard to come here with the rope or whatever. And then you do whatever it is you do in Clue. To be honest, Clue's not my favorite game, but you know, we played it. Um, and we played the whole game. We played for about 45 minutes and, you know, somebody won and it was great. It was a real family thing. And we, and, you know, we didn't have to see the, the, um, each of our boards. We just told people where we were and people could just move us to where we were. So, but we did have a host who helped us play that game. And, uh, on the nephew, Benjamin, he also helped us doing, um, with that uh, fishbowl or three times a lady game. So we all texted him what our three words were, and then he randomized them and sent them back to the one individual on the team who was either, you know, saying the, 
describing what the word was or acting it out with charades or giving the single word for it. So he essentially functioned as our basket where we kept all the words in and he was randomly pulling them out and sending them to one person via text. Now you can use, I think somebody might've mentioned this, you can use the chat function to be able to do that if everybody is alone. So if we were all here playing by ourselves on one, uh, as one team member, or if groups decided to play together, we could be texting and we could be using the chat function to send that sort of information out. So what you need there then um, is somebody to really, when it gets to this level, the word games actually, like you were all able to go off and play um, the minister's cat without a host being there to remind you what to do. It was that kind of simple of a game. But other games get more complex and you really do need a host who understands all the rules of the game and how it's gonna be adapted virtually and can handle all that stuff by either using the chat function or by texting people. Does that all make sense? You know, so that's just taking it to another level, but it was really fun to do it that way. Um, let me see, how are we doing on time? Okay, I've got one more, a couple more ideas for games. Um, this is what I like to think of is, I call it, um, magazine games and um you know several magazines have like weekly monthly features where they have games in it and this is one i really like this is uh from the new yorker uh the new yorker caption game have anybody ever heard about this um yes. on new yorker they'll just yeah they'll put a cartoon up without a caption and they'll invite people to put send in captions and then they have people vote on them now online and then you know later on you'll find out who won and so what i did is i just went to instagram and grabbed a bunch of old screenshots of all, some old um new yorker cartoons and took the uh caption out and so if we were going to play this game let's say we get into small groups um in a breakout rooms or whatever um, and, and I have to tell you, I'm not quite sure about the functionality of all this. I think what we would have to do is you would need a host in a breakout room able to share their screen rather than, you know, everybody sharing the screen with everyone. But is anybody willing to take a, uh, a try at uh, what a good caption for this would be? We have uh, two cats. We have a gift counselor. And uh, the counselor is giving some advice to this other cat. Does anybody want to share a caption? Uh, any thoughts? You got one? You can't go wrong with a traditional dead mouse. That's the gift counselor's advice for the other cat. Okay. All right, how about this one? There's a cat playing a banjo, maybe whistling, I don't know. There's a woman looking off in the other direction. She doesn't look terribly happy. Any thoughts on what might be a good uh, caption for this? I know one right now. The whistling was bad enough. Yeah, we, we only get that. We, we're the only ones who get that one but trying to see the chat here. They're hilarious. Someone said, sing. Another one said, I told you, you don't have to sing for your supper. Um, I didn't know the minister's cat was a banjo player. <laughs> 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 That's great. Fantastic. I love it. Oh, let me see here. I'm trying to actually the, I'm okay. I'm running into another slightly. There we go. That's it. The cat has to go. That's actually, we came up with better ones, right? I think so too. And to play the way you would play this game too is you would vote, you know, like what was the best one that people came up with? Here's one more for you. This is my cat series that I pulled out, right? So it's a, a cat um, with a microphone um, standing in front of. Uh, a couple of people sitting on couches, sitting on a couch. Any thoughts on that? 
the minister's cat is a tone deaf cat. Yeah. Very good. That was the previous one. So, you know, they, <laughs> oh, to fancy feast. Thank you. That's very good. Oh, I want to play this game with y'all. <laughs> He's telling us. <laughs> oh. You are okay. so much funnier than I never would have guessed. Okay. All right. So I'm going to show you this work of root. But um, <clears throat> I know what you've come to expect from me is physical comedy, but tonight I thought I'd try something a little different. We were so much right. better. We were Which so one do you like better? much better. All of them, a minister, a priest, and a rabbi came into a bar. And that's it for tonight's show, except Fish's tips. Take the dog, please. They're hilarious, what we came up with. Good, good, yeah. Good job. This worked out better than I imagined. So, um, okay. I'm supposed to be going back to seeing my screen now. Where'd y'all go? There you are. Okay. And another game I saw that I'll just tell you about quickly. It's from Wired Magazine, and they've been doing six word sci fi stories. Six word sci fi stories. And um, what they do is give you a prompt. And uh, this one was six word sci fi stories save the planet was the prompt. So you're just supposed to think of a science fiction story that's only six words long that would have something to do with save the planet, okay? Um, and I'll just show you this one. So this was the winning one. Melting ice cap reveals reset button. And there's a polar bear looking at a reset button. Anyway, that was the winning story. Melting ice cap reveals reset button. So um, that's another kind of game you could play. You could um, do six word stories and then just whatever topic, right? And then something like that. So the six word things I think makes great games too. They also make good uh, icebreaker sort of things, you know. So, so the way I see it, just to kind of recap here, um, working on my devices here. So the way I see it, yes. There are two kinds of games. You could do a virtual game nights. Games you could do with a whole group like this, where you can break people down into smaller groups. You could do those smaller groups in breakout room, rooms, or you could have people go to different hosts' um, Zoom accounts and play the games there. Um, the virtual parlor games, I think, really are give you a lot to go on. And Sharon will we'll create a list. We'll send it to you uh, in a couple of days. It'll have the various links that we found to find some of these games, but also some of our favorite games with some of the rules for them and things like that. So you'll be able to see what those games are like. Um, using the whiteboard for sharing your screen, um, you can play some games that way, as Jenny told us. You can play Pictionary that way. You can do Spaceship that way. Um, a lot of board games, you don't actually need to have the board to play because they're kind of based off of parlor games anyway. So think about adapting a board game without having to use the board. Or I can imagine finding three or four families that like to play Clue or whatever, or Risk or something like that, and maybe they would want to play it again. Uh, Bruce is asking about charades, and yes, you can even do charades on this. It's kind of closed quarter charades, but you can do it, especially if you're in a smaller group, you know, maybe six greens, something like that. Uh, Sharon's talked about playing Trivial Pursuit online like that. Um, Sharon, you were actually going to mention Cards Against Humanity, which, you know, is more of a mature game to play, but there are family-friendly versions of that, too. Um, those are kind of just rollicking games where you're making things up. You know, just, it's just, they're just, you know, you're having fun with them like that. Um, so I think there's just a variety of things you can do with this. Uh, dice games will work too. Mm, yeah. So that was our hope for tonight is that we would just introduce this concept to you, give you maybe some of the basic ideas about how it might work. Um, it's been a little bit field tested, as you've heard. Some of us have done this with our families and in smaller groups. 
Um, Secret Hitler is an interesting game, yes. Um, there's also the evil Santa Claus version of that. Um, so we're hoping that, you know, you're all coming up with some great ideas already. So I think you kind of understand what we were, what we were hoping for, that this would just kind of um, uh, give you the motivation to think about, well, what would a game like Late Night look like at our congregation? And what kind of games could we play? And who might I ask to be one of the hosts? Um, and so I see we have a minute left here, Sharon. Is there anything you would like to say in this last minute that we have? Yes, go forth and have fun. Um, and if you're using one account for your worship, and it's the same account for games. Remember on worship, you're gonna want all those privacy concerns that we talked about at the start. So people can't, you know, you're gonna want people to be unable to share screen. Um, you're gonna to wanna to monitor to make sure if someone Zoom bombs you, you can get rid of them, right? Those are all settings on your Zoom account. But when you send out a link to your friends and members to play, it's not to the public. I mean, so, we're hoping your friends and members will wish you no ill will, and they're not going to do those sorts of things. But that's when you can enable the share settings. Yep, you can loosen up on those settings and let more people use them and participate. Okay, y'all, it's eight o'clock. This has been fun. I'm glad we got to play a few games. Um, send us your ideas. Uh, P. Lund at uua.org. S. Dittmar at uua.org. Send us your ideas. Uh, we'd love to add to our list of possible games that people can play. Okay. So did you say go forth and have fun, Sharon? Was that it? Was that our benediction? Okay. Go forth and have fun. It was great seeing everybody. Thank you so much. Enjoy your game nights.